Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. I'm Nathan, also known as Taneb. Um, and I'm going to be talking today about, the uh, title of the talk is A Tour of Esoteric Programming Languages. And can anyone tell me what is a programming language? <laughs> It's something showing complete that you, that's probably text based or well no not text based but is on a computer and you interact with it digitally. And it doesn't have to be showing complete. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose DSLs. Yeah, more or less. And what are programming languages normally designed to be? Easy. Useful. Yeah. Useful. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what happens if a programming language is not designed to be useful? It's an esoteric language. Yes. <laughs> um, the first such language that I'm going to be talking about is HQ9+. Now, there's a every programming language has a few example programs shown in it. It's Hello World is a common one. Uh, 99 Bottles of Beer is another common one. And then some people write, write quans. And someone realised this a few years ago and thought, you know what, I'm going to make a minimum such language that, such that they can do all of those things. And it has the commands H, Q, 9, and plus. H prints hello world. Um, 9 prints the full lyrics to 99 bottles of beer, which I'm not going to write on the whiteboard. Uh, Q prints the entire program source to the output, so as a quine, and plus increments the, increments the accumulator. You can't do anything else with the accumulator, you can just increment it. Um, as you can see, it's a very useful language. For all you. It can do all these common programs. OK, that's... <laughs> All there's really to say about HQ9+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next language I'm going to talk about is... Deadfish. And Deadfish was designed to be so hard to program in it. The programming of just like eating raw fish heads. <laughs> it has... Um, uh, again, four commands. It's increment the accumulator, decrement the accumulator, I'm probably getting these wrong, I can't quite remember. Um, square the accumulator, and output the accumulator. And I think that uses the ASCII value of the, or Unicode value of the accumulator rather than putting it as a number. So, uh, and when the accumulator gets to 256, it wraps around to zero. So the reference implementation had a bug such that when you're squaring it rather than incrementing it, you can go past 256, so it's effectively unbounded. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's Deadfish. Has anyone actually written anything in it successfully? Uh, yes, you can print all manner of text outputting programs in it, but nothing more than that. Fair enough. And, um, <laughs> Yep. Now, all, all the programming languages I mentioned after this, you could probably, are probably more useful than these, than these two. Now, the next, now I'm going to wind down the projective thing while I'm waiting. Okay. Uh, the, the first. I'm going to go back in time now to 1972, and a couple of people decided to make a language that was completely different from any other language that existed at the time that they knew about, which is mainly things like Fortran, COBOL, Lisp, maybe C, a few like that, few of that era. Um, and they, they ended up with a language called Compiler Language with No Pronounceable Acronym, or for short, Intercal for obvious reasons. Intercal had things, um, it didn't have arrays, it, um, I don't think, you, you had to be polite to the compiler, 
a third to a fifth of your commands had to be preceded by the keyword please. <laughs> um, I, I do not, I am afraid I do not know Intercal very well at all, so I'm not going to talk for too long about it. Um, right. Have any of you heard of the not quite so esoteric language fourth? Yes. yes. That's not esoteric. I know, I'm saying it's, I said not quite so esoteric. <laughs> uh, well, in 1993, I think, um, someone decided to make a fourth like language that had as small a compiler as he can manage. He managed to create the language false, named after his favourite truth value. Which had, a com <laughs> <laughs> which, had a com which had a compiler, the, the Amiga OS, I think, there was only 1,024 bytes. And that's, I don't know false that much either, so I'm not going to talk about too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, <laughs> the next language, um, also invented in 1993, someone saw this compiler and thought, hmm, the smaller language, I could do a lot better than that. So I think it was Urban Muller created a language called Brainfuck. <laughs> it operated not on a stack, not on an array, but on a tape, which you could move backwards and forwards arbitrarily one side at a time. You could increment the tape and decrement the tape and have loops that kept, kept executing the, pro the content within the loop, whenever the, the cell value of the cell pointed at at the end of the loop was zero. No, in, until it was zero. So why, why not zero? So, and um, Brainfuck is, is probably one of the most famous esoteric programming languages. And it's pretty useful. It's it is Turing complete. <laughs> I th I think someone someone wrote a choose your own event no text adventure game in it, which was an achievement. I haven't played it, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, he managed to write the compiler for that in I think two hundred and fifty seven bytes. That's kind of terrifying. Yes, it's a small language. Um, the next language I'm going to talk about. Is this gone? Is um, underload. Okay. Underload is fourth like, as in it operates on a stack. It's got, I think that's eight, eight commands plus the bracket, included in the bracket syntax. Um, brackets push the contents of the bracket to the stack, and then tilled. What are the specs I can remember because this is a vaguely interesting one? <laughs> uh, swap the two top elements of the stack. Um, colon duplicates the top element of the stack. Exclamation mark discards the top element of the stack. Um, asterisk concatenates the top element of the stack. Switches them together. Um, A wraps, wraps the, the top element of the stack in a pair of parentheses. Um, S outputs the top element of the stack, thus popping it, and caret is the interesting one. When, when the caret command is called, it takes the top element of the stack and executes it as though it was an underload program. Now, this is pretty odd. It's but in these few instructions, that it's actually Turing complete, even though there's no control structure here. The only control structure you can do is by duplicating, by pushing code to the stack, duplicating it, then executing it. Um, uh, if I now there, there's a, that's a hello world program, and uh, this 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 program. Here, it prints the Fibonacci sequence in unary because <laughs> there's no number number literals or anything in this. 
still so just as if I, I think, concatenating asterisks together. And that's an infinite loop, as it says. Um, that's a quine. And for everyone, I'm sorry I'm just copying this. I've literally got the website open. And, and there's an online interpreter, so I can show, show you in more detail how the execute thing works. If I if, say hello, S. Single step. Right. That, that's pushed hello S to the stack. OK? Because, and then if I do caret, it copies that back to the program <laughs> and then put, and executes it. Which is surprisingly useful. And you now, another thing interesting about underload is, well, A, it can, you can compile, you can translate um, SKI calculus, which is, which in turn you can compile Lambda calculus too. So it is provable to and complete that way. But also, um, some people with way too much time on their hands <laughs> prove that I think you can prove that it's Turing complete if you move almost everything from the language other than parentheses and carrot, and I think one other, but I can't remember which, maybe tilde, which took a lot of effort and involves Minsky um, two register machines. Um, so congratulations to them. <laughs> um, the next language I'm going to Right, Go, going back to 1993, <laughs> going back to 1993, someone completely disconnected with the whole false brain fuck thing, I think, um, deci decided to make a, another language that operated on our stack, but, it's, but he decided to have the, int the thing, most, pro most programming languages, the code is one-dimensional. You do command, then command, then command in a linear way. This programming language, the, but all the commands are on a grid, and you can change which direction you're pointing in. Um, and then in 1998, he revised the language to make it more powerful, because the 1990, oh, it's Bithun, I didn't say the name. The 1993 <laughs> version is called Bithunj 93. And then 1998 version is Bifunge 98. And it's a pretty rich language for an esoteric programming language. It's got loads of commands. Um, it's push numbers and go west and turn. Go and west. <laughs> <laughs> How many languages do you know that have a go west command? Well, that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, what's really amazing, um, to demonstrate how usable, oddly, this language is, um, someone, again, with too much time in hands, <laughs> sorry if you're watching this at home, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wrote an IRC bot that has a, in this language, what? <laughs> uh, that's, this is this, some of the source, that connects to IRC and was if you mention it's Nick, which is Fungot, it's, it's on free node, it works via private message, and it's also in hash esoteric. It generates a sentence via Markov chains on a, on a choice of corpuses, corpora. And um, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty. It, it is. It's, you, I almost wonder if you could it. Just so it's, it's also images. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do syscalls in it? Pardon? How do you do syscalls and things in it? I mean, I'm assuming it has to have a way to. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it does. It's it's got a um, the 98 the 1998 version has a load semantics command, which I think sort of lo loads a arbitrary library arbitrary plugin into it. And there's a list of standard plugins. 
and you can do syscalls yeah. via one of that one of them. Okay, and you mentioned how it was like making images. <laughs> uh, the next language I'm going to talk about um, invented quite, a, I think, quite a few years later by an Australian called David Morgan Marr. Befund was invented by Canadian Chris Pressey, um, called um, Pyatt, after the abstract artist Pyatt Mondrian. And um, in the language Pyatt, programs are images. And it, it works by looking at the it's the hue and brightness of each block of single colour and then the relative hue of brightness of the next one it moves to it's got a point of it and um, it's the difference between those that chooses what command it executes and uh, this is a, a uh, it's a prime tester you input a number and it test, tests whether it is prime with difficulty? It's, um, <laughs> it, it does have I.O. commands that are done by the difference in Q and brightness of the cards. <laughs> um, P is actually one of my, one of my favourite languages, I would say. Uh, it was also one of the first I learnt. Um, but... <laughs> and... Uh, how am I doing for time? I've got plenty of time. Mm. Well, as much time as I need because I'm running out of talk. Piet, as is actually quite common in esoteric programming languages, operates on a stack. Most of them do, I'll be honest. Apart from the ones that operate on the tape. Or the ones that operate on the picture. No, this operates on a stack. No, but the, the fun. The, the fun which operates has a stack. All right, but also and it and it self modifies, which yeah. is a tech, which is a grid of tech characters. So, well, going back, I've got to mention something. But I'm not very organised, am I? Back to here. Uh, one of the difficulties was one of the difficulties with Perfunge is that because a you can go into any command in any direction. And sometimes I'll be interpreting it as a string, sometimes I'll be interpreting it as a, as a command. And also because you can modify the program during execution by, by the program, you can't just do it arbitrarily at the keyboard. Um, it is almost impossible to compile. I do not know of any compilers that don't cheat for it, it's mostly interpreted. Um, one, one compiler that does cheat for it, um, takes every possible direction of commands. I say for that to go, go west and that to go south. It's skipped. Uh, so it goes along there to down there. That's also skipped. Ignore that. Um, uh, it, it takes. One point of the boss. Yeah. Um, it takes every possible series of commands that's in a straight line, compiles those separately with links to each other, and whenever the program is self-modified, it completely recompiles, or possibly slightly more cleverly than that, but it recompiles the program whenever it's self-modified. So the compiled program contains its own compiler? Yes. <laughs> if you can think of a better way to do it... I can't. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, Bifunge is almost always interpreted. And the last language I am going to talk about is somewhat different to these, and for that I'm going to scroll this up again. Um, okay. It's um, It's it's called slashes, <laughs> and um, how many of you have used 
use the Linux utility sed. Yeah. Okay, for those of you who haven't, um, um, one of the most common uses for sed is to look over sta standard in, match over a path, and replace that with a new text. So you execute it like something like sed s slash sedge sedge text. That's not at all. Replacement. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, what slashes this language, which I presume is called, uh, is pronounced slashes? Its its title is not the most pronounceable. Um, how it works is the source code is a series of slash search slash replace that operates on itself repeatedly. Wow. <laughs> so um, probably get so a slash A, B, A, A slash B slash <laughs> A slash C slash. Well, the first, the first thing you would see, you would see this, and then replace all the A's after that with B's. So that becomes. I'm probably getting this all up wrong. It becomes BC. Then, if, if I thought about this in the head, it, then it can't do that again. So it looks at the, at the next pair, then replaces all the Bs after that with Cs. And then so on. And you can put more slashes in using backslashes and slash, like an escape character like is common to many languages. And I believe th this took, this is actually Turing complete, <laughs> but it took a very long time to prove Turing complete. I think so it was eventually proven Turing complete by um, someone writing an, an interpreter for a, a, ta a tag system in it, <laughs> which it, um, it took a while. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very glad it wasn't me doing it. <laughs> It's an interesting one, just as in you can see quite easily how you could implement like adding one to a number until you get to nine, and then you have ones and and then you have ones and zeros in ten, oh. so it would be be a place. You could always do. Does yeah. it support like proper regular expressions? No, ju just 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 just, just, just raw really, search and replace. Just 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 frustrating. Yeah. So, um, that would just be too frightening. Well, I, I, I think <laughs> <they were completely laughs> I think there is a extension to it that supports regular expressions, <laughs> but this one's cooler. <laughs> uh, so if you want to say, uh, if you were, what you were saying, I don't know, you could do something like one zero goes to one one. Uh, and but that, I suppose what you'd actually have to do would be to go down. Um, and because uh, yeah, if you were replacing fifteen with oh, yeah. sixteen, and then and then one, one nine fourteen two, with fifteen, and one so nine on. two zero or something. Yeah, and you would you would have pairs of numbers going up, slowly going down mm. within the range. But <laughs> I don't know. It would be horrendously complicated. Oh, that's something for you to think about. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually quite an interesting one to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's all the preparation I've done. <laughs> um, I've got a list of other interesting languages that I'm not going to talk about, except in vague, vague vagueness. Um, mind raising that, don't need to. Uh, there's 
glass, which is stack-based, heavily object-oriented, and uses postfix notation. Um, uh, white space, where this is a white space program. It's the only all the commands are space, the space symbol, the tab symbol, and new line, and various combinations thereof. Um, yeah, um, I believe the the, the main the main goal of um, the main goal of um, white space was to save on ink and to be a great benefit to spies because you just print out your program and no one would suspect there's a program on a blank piece of paper that you can just type it back in. There is such a program on a blank piece of paper. Well, yes, it is. Not even real. Um, and another fun language is Shakespeare. Well, all the programs look like Shakespeare plays. And there are other of that sort of thing where chef, like chef, where they all look like recipes, and probably others that I'm forgetting. But there are a few like that. Um, there's whenever, which isn't too popular, but I like it, where the program is a to do, like, now, how old basic programs, yeah, it was written like a to-do list with numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and whenever, it, it, it's executed like a to-do list in whatever, whatever order you feel like. What? <laughs> it, it takes a random command and executes it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that is, A, it's possible to write entirely deterministic programs in it if you're clever enough and bored enough. And B, I think it's too incomplete. Although don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, another, another language that's interesting is e e e e e e drone. I don't know quite how to write that name. <laughs> I'm probably spelling on that one as well. Where the the program is is a is a collection of, of graph of arbitrary unlabeled unweighted graphs, and the way it works is it take it take it takes graphs in pairs and um, and searches for subgraphs of the current state graph. Which are isomorphic to the first of the pair of graphs of the program. There is a default state graph. It's, and then replace if it finds a subgraph that's isomorphic to that graph, it replaces it with the replacement graph. It's and I think it's NP hard to implement. <laughs> but turn <to> complete. <laughs> because and uh, the last one I'm going to mention, and did I prepare the, no I didn't, um, I'm going to go a quick googling, <laughs> this, this one has an uh, interesting probe. Uh, I, I do not understand this language at all, very, very, very few people do. Um, uh, this is a 99 bottles of beer program. Um, Obviously. <laughs> I, I believe the, the programming language, A, its internal state is in ternary rather than binary, and B, it encrypts itself at every step. The first Hello World program was, was someone wrote a list program that did a beam search of all possible malbolge programs and then decided one that printed hello world all lowercase except for the lap final D was close enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think... This is something... <laughs> yeah, it was a, a Japanese researcher possibly a team of Japanese researchers who finally figured out how to write malborn programs. <laughs> 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 and 
came up with this. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say, this does not contain in any form the lyrics. It, it computes the lyrics rather than contains it. A program that contains the lyrics will be thousands of times longer. <laughs> Even though this is already about 100 times longer than the lyrics to 99 bottles of beer. <laughs> um, wow. And yes, and that is the end of my talk. Any questions? So when you're going to do a, a live coding demonstration in our log? Ha! If you want further information, I would check out the. <laughs> <laughs> Isolands.org wiki, and also the IRC channel Hashisoteric at irc.freeload.net. Thank you. Question? Um, I was just wondering, it would be a, a fun idea to have a competition where you were given a program and you had to work out how the esoteric programming language that it was of, what it actually did underneath, what the commands did. <laughs> That'd be interesting for a quiz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Less a quiz, more a. It was more a remark than a yes. question, really. Yeah, could be a good idea. I would talk about that on the C channel. Sorry, I said sorry, not there. Any further questions? How do they create the languages? Uh, by, tre by treating programming language design as an art form. Is that an answer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also by having a completely random idea and pushing it to the max. Yeah, it's that. It's, or by combining a few concepts that should not ever be combined. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's the mad science of programming. <laughs> it's the mad science mixed with cookery side of programming. Ah, the mad cookery of programming. Yes. Ah, uh, put in some eggs, and some paprika. That could work. And some icing sugar. <laughs> <laughs> the vanilla as well, all of it. And it's, yeah, it's, mad, it's the mad cookery of programming language design. And uh, time for the next talk. <laughs> don't bush your luck. <laughs> Possibly the title of this talk. <laughs> that talk has rewritten re itself, so there it goes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And any other questions? Julian Complete has lost all reading to you. <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's a question. And that will be the end of my talk then. Thanks. <laughs>